Steve Canyon. A salute to the Air Force Men of America. Thunder? Yes. And you don't know better than this? Take off, mister. <laughs> hey, uh, where'd you find this one? I said take off. You been uh, following the camps? Charlie, please, let's go. Hey, uh, where are you gonna take her from here, flat boy? <laughs> What place you think this is? I think I know. Look, you take your warm back to camp or outside in the alley. Yeah. Let's go outside in the alley, flyboy. Charlie, please. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah. He'll be back in a minute. Officer? Air Force. On your way. Now, look, Shorty, are you sure you know what you're doing? Wouldn't you rather just go home and spend a nice, peaceful evening? <laughs> you know, that's funny. That's just what you're gonna get. Nice, peaceful evening. Pick them up! gets here, I want him to get one impression. That is, that we're all on his side. I don't have to tell you comedians that this man's gonna have it plenty tough. What this base did to the last CO we had, I don't have to tell you that either. The new old man's gonna need all the help we can give him. Just bear that in mind at all times. If this guy's gonna flunk out too, it's not gonna be our fault. What's the background, Sarge? Where's this guy come from? What's he done? He's a light colonel and he's been around. That's all I know. That's all I want to know. Except for one thing. That is, that I'm thankful I haven't got his job. What's holding him up? The Major's probably showing him the garbage disposal. That's what system. amounts to the long and the short of it, Colonel. Nice no matter how you here we are at the gateway to what will serve as your inner sanctum. This is your office, and this is your office staff. At ease, gentlemen. First and foremost, Base Master Sergeant McConaughey. Sergeant McConaughey? Colonel. The unofficial mother hand of Big Thunder Air Base. McConaughey enlisted in the Air Force shortly after the surrender at Appomattox. Colonel, I'd like you to meet your office staff. This is Sergeant Berger in charge of paper clips and carbons and triplicates. Sergeant. Glad to know you, Colonel. Airman Featherstone. He does all our left-handed typing. Welcome to Big Thunder, Colonel. Featherstone. Literal translation from the Iroquois, sir. It's always a pleasure to do business with 100% Americans. This way, Colonel. Don't expect anything elaborate. We're just a poor little backyard out here. So is Appomattox, Major. I hope you don't like upholstered furniture, Colonel. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have any here. Big Thunder's not large enough for a general, and I guess they figure anything less than that can uh, still fit the hard seats. 
Now you tell me what else you need, and I'll scrounge around for it. Let's have it, Major. Sir? Sit down, Major. Thank you, sir. Big Thunder Air Base at the foot of the Grandy Mountain Range, state of California, has an enlisted personnel of 1,127 men, 312 officers, 25 square miles of real estate, two runways facing north, south, east, and west. Just about the lowest base personnel morale factor in the entire United States. Yes, sir. You know what they call it in the Pentagon? Death Valley. For obvious reasons. When I hear the last two commanding officers are now cutting out paper dolls. Both good men. They tried hard. You've had two cases of out-and-out -out desertion here in the past five months. Right. And the highest steady number of hospitalized cases for any base twice this size in the country. Yes, sir. Major, what's the trouble here? Perhaps I uh, better shake your hand and go quietly. Let's have it, Major. It's the town, sir. Big Thunder. Well, what's wrong with Big Thunder? They hate us. Hate? Well, you know what happens when a jet air base moves into a community. They don't like the noise we make when we fly. They don't like the noise we make when we're on the ground. They don't like us. Well, what's that got to do with the morale of the men here on the base? Colonel, there are 1,439 men on this base. You know what their average age is? I checked the records pretty carefully. The average age on this base is 24. Now, I'll admit that 24 is a man-sized age, but it also represents a lot of kids who were fresh out of college when they first got here or away from home for the first time in their lives. They fly hard and they work hard. And when they get a little time off, where do they go? They go to town. It's the only place they can go. They go to town because they're 24 years old and they get homesick, every one of them. Or they want a little touch of home away from home. So they go to town. And what do they find when they get there? They find a, a town that slams the door in their faces, that practically pushes them off the sidewalk, that screams bloody murder if one of our men in uniform so much as looks at one of their female children. There must be some reason for it. You can't tell me that the Air Force is one big band of angels and the civilians around here are nothing but a bunch of thugs. Major, what are we doing that's wrong? Maybe you'd like to hear it from the horse's mouth. Would the colonel care to take a walk to the infirmary with me? A Saturday night, sir. This girl and I met. Uh, we went in this bar. Clausen's on V.C. Street. So we're sitting in this booth and we're having a couple of beers. And over comes one of these townies and starts making cracks. What kind of cracks? About the girl. So we go up back and uh, so this guy turns into three guys and I turn into a setup. Are you sure it was three? <laughs> Feels more like six. Well, anyway, the next thing I know, I'm waking up in here. I see. Thank you, Brannigan. Major. Thank you, Colonel. What about the local police? Same question your two predecessors asked. And what was the answer? The answer is the local police works for the town, not for the Air Force. Something like this comes up, they just look the other way. Is that Point it? of phrase, whenever you need a policeman in this town, you can never find one. What's the name of the chief of police? Hagedorn. B. Curtis Hagedorn, if you'll excuse the expression. Nice of you to come down there, Colonel. I'll say that. The two high and mighty muckamucks who ran that base before you, they didn't have sense enough to do that. They kept telling me to come up and see them. And did you? I'm a busy man, Colonel. Just as busy as any commander of any air base. Chief, last Saturday night, one of my men was so severely beaten by unknown assailants, he was taken to the hospital. After being beaten up, he was booked for felonious assault by your men. No civilian arrests were made. Let me tell you something, Colonel. When one of your kids comes into town on Saturday night hooting and hollering and looking for a place to blow off steam, I don't blame my neighbors if they beat up on him once in a while. That's their way of letting off steam. Then you condone it. Is that what you're saying? I'm telling you to keep your kids out of town. That's what I'm doing. And if they continue to come to town? 
I hope that's a big hospital you got there, Colonel. Thank you for taking the time to see me, Mr. Hagedorn. Not at all, not at all, any time. Just phone for an appointment. Thank you, I will. Let's go, Major. Go, Colonel. That's right, Major, we go. Mr. Hagedorn, you seem like a man who has a deep abiding concern for all of his friends and neighbors. Oh. Yes, I guess you could say that. Very well, tell this to your friends and neighbors for their own good. There better not be any more cases of assault and battery committed upon the persons of Air Force personnel. In words of one syllable, lay off. <laughs> When did that happen? Four months ago. They took a kid named Ainley, a baby. I don't think he knew how to shave. Six goons picked on him one night in the bar and grill, and he wound up with a concussion. And as for the cops... Cops? What cops? Oh, let's not give the Colonel the idea. This goes on all the time. It happens often enough. Colonel, any guy from this base goes into a tavern alone is taking his life in his hands. Even two guys. Well, even three. Things always been like this in Big Thunder? No, sir. Things were fine for a long time after we moved in here. It's only in the last year that the whole situation's changed. The town used to welcome us with open arms. Now we're like two enemy camps. Are we entirely blameless? Could our boys be provoking these fights? Well, they could be, but I'd hate to think they were that stupid. Well, how many of the town saloons have been involved in these fights? Maybe we could declare the really rough ones off limits. Uh, you'd have to declare them all off limits. The trouble is nobody's doing anything about it from the town side. We could patrol the streets with our air police, but we don't have enough men. Colonel Canyon's office. This is McConaughey. What? When? Yeah. All right. There's been a real slugfest down in a tavern on Cornhill Street, sir. Two of our men were involved. What happened? We'll know in about 10 minutes, sir. They had to send out an ambulance for our men. What'll it be, Air Force? Oh, let's have beer. Come and get it. Sure.
get you something? Huh? I'm the waitress. Oh, uh, the waiter brought it to me. Buy me one, will you? Sure. <laughs> Another beer. You looking for trouble? You talking to me? This happens to be my girl you're bothering. Am I bothering you, honey? Sure, you're bothering me. See? Well, that makes us even. I've got your girl, she's got my beer. Make him take that back. Better take it back, Buster. You guys gonna start swinging while I'm still sitting down? Or are you going to be fair and let me stand up? Hey, not in here. I don't want no trouble in here. You guys do what you want to do outside. Come on, wise guy. One at a time, of course. Oh, sure, sure. Steve, there should be a sharp decline in the number of Air Force men waylaid by a person or persons unknown. But unfortunately, we really didn't settle anything tonight. We didn't? The idea is to prevent war, not declare it. Meaning? It's time for the peace pipe. The what? The peace pipe. Where is he? Oh, sir. That what's his name, the new CO around here. You referring to Lieutenant Colonel Canyon? Yeah, the one I want to see. Did you phone for an appointment? Let's not kid around. I thought it was your sworn policy to make the base officers come to you. You flatter me, Mr. Hergadorn. Get rid of these monkeys. You're in my office now, Mr. Hagedorn. I want to talk to you privately, Canyon. All right. Gentlemen. A bunch of your guerrillas came into town tonight and beat up three citizens of Big Thunder. Oh, did they now? About 20 of them moved into a bar on Veazey Street, hauled three guys out of there into a back alley and beat them up. 20 of them? And they used lead pipe and brass knucks. Who told you this? The guys who were beat up. How do you know it was base personnel that pulled this down? Because they were wearing uniforms. And who told you that? The guys who were beat up. Well, that's a serious accusation. It's the truth. Well, now, there's only one way to find out about that, isn't there? We'll conduct a thorough investigation. Oh, let's not waste time, can you? No, let's not waste any time on the due process of law. Let's just take the word of three booze hounds in the saloon and condemn the Air Force without a hearing. <laughs> Chief Hagedorn, I'd like to ask you one question. What? What's your beef against the Air Force? What's mine? All right. 
That's a fair question. Thank you. I'll answer it. You're new around here, Canyon. You ain't had time to get educated. Let me start you, Colonel. This town don't like the Air Force. If you want to know why not, I'll tell you why not. We don't like your kids coming in and crowding up our schools. We don't like people who don't go to our churches. We don't like all the families who move in with the Air Force, take a lease on a house, and then move out suddenly without paying the rent. We don't like all the noise your jet aeroplanes make. We don't like people who don't know how long they're going to stay here, so they don't give a hoot how they live. What do you mean by that? They dirty up our houses, and they don't care where they dump their garbage. And we don't like your Air Force wise guys standing around on corners whistling at our girls and looking for trouble. We just don't like it, Canyon. You asked, I'm telling you. Chief Hagedorn. It's a remarkable thing how quickly the climate changes in towns like this. What? The Air Force announces it's going to build a base near a small town, a town like, say, Big Thunder. Population jumps for joy. That means a pot of gold for everybody in the town. So they roll out the red carpets. They love us. You jack your rentals 300% and the real estate goes sky high. Now, wait a minute. So we open the base and everybody gets fat and prosperous as advertised. And that's when the climate changes. What do you mean? Oh, it's an old story with the Air Force. Somehow or other, all the prosperity begins to breed contempt. Your local banks are coining money. All the stores and the movie houses and the restaurants are doing a land office business. Everybody in town's buying second mortgages and playing the stock market. And that's when you forget who made it all possible. You're a bunch of fat cats now, and you don't like it when a jet disturbs your afternoon nap. And your schools are too crowded. Your streets aren't as clean as they used to be. And it's all our fault. Right. Right. We all realized that before the Air Force came to Big Thunder, it was a model community. There were no dishonest people in Big Thunder before we came. All your children were quiet, courteous, helpful, and sweet. Nobody ever stood on a street corner whistling at a girl. There was no crime in this town. The police had nothing to do but help old ladies cross the street. Only after we came to Big Thunder did you people learn about such things as noise and crime and trouble in this world. Bear this in mind, Chief Hagedorn. The Air Force, like death and taxes, is in Big Thunder to stay. Not by choice, but by assignment. We live here, and we'd like to belong here. Whether we do or not is up to all of us. Think it over, Chief. <laughs> something, Sarge? What, sir? I think we got ourselves a boy. <laughs>